I call to order the Board of Trustees regular meeting for December 20th, 2022, and the time is 6 o'clock. Trustee Johnson, would you like to give the invocation? The stand up by this me. Dara, thank you for this great day at the township, and thank you for the citizens, and thank you for giving us a, a reason to celebrate this season. And uh, I pray that you be with those who give us our freedoms to, to have this type of country that we have, and those men that are overseas and missing their loved ones on Christmas Day, that you would be with them and to hold them close. Amen. 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 Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation <coughs> under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ms. Marion? Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Ms. McGee? Here. I move to adopt the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Yes, I'd like to move to amend the agenda to add under new business, formally requesting the aggregator trouble to produce their current and past fees received from our township's aggregation program per our contract. Uh, they are limited to a specific fee, uh, yet they refuse to provide what they've actually received in fees and what our residents were charged. Uh, in my opinion, the only reason that they would do this if they uh, did not uh, abide by the contract or charging higher fees. Um, since these fees are tacked on to rates at the supplier which the residents are charged, we have a duty to ensure Treble abided by the contract and residents were not overcharged and possibly do a refund. Additionally, I'd like to move to add setting a date for and asking other aggregators to present to the board for the open uh, gas aggregation the upcoming electric aggregation term end on April 23rd, 2023 to allow proper time for proposals and discussion. We should not enter into any additional contract extension, let alone a five-year contract with treble as they requested when aggregation terms are typically two to three years. Lack of second, we'll go ahead and call for the question. Was a second called? Lack of a second. Call for the question, Ms. Varian? Well, there's discussion still. There's no discussion. There's dis on, on the original Is there, is there a discussion? Mr. Yes. Ms. Okay, you read what you had to say. Mr. Okay. Uh, Johnson, you have a discussion? No. Okay, I don't have a discussion. All right. Uh, I don't understand why we can't get important items on the, this agenda. Uh, this aggregation uh, item would take a minute of formally requesting trouble to produce their fees. Again, we owe the fiduciary responsibility to our residents. I'd also like to ask, where are the updates on these agendas? For months, neither the board nor residents have been updated. The Scannell, impact on surrounding residents, Meek Street impacts, Meek lawsuit, union negotiations, anything on development, water and sewer, park, cemeteries, fire district, JEDS, JEDSEs, records commission, zoning. Where are the minutes? They should be provided at the next meeting. Neither, again, this board is or residents are being updated. We haven't had any updates on union negotiations since they started. And all these items are pretty much under the control of one trustee. That is inappropriate. This township is being run like a sole proprietorship with one person in charge. This is a board of trustees which are equal and we should all have information and be able to provide input. And with that, we need to be updated and be provided information. I just found out today that the agenda material uh, our secretary would not provide it to me on the direction of the other two trustees. That is inappropriate. I should not have to sit here and the first time see, the, see these materials when they're available to the other board members. We need to start working together for the benefit of the township and residents. And that includes proper agenda items. Mr. 
lack of second, we'll go ahead and call for the question. Mr. Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans. We're voting on the original motion, correct? We're voting on the original adopted agenda. Okay. Ms. Oops. Zverian? Mr. Adams? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move to set limit of not more than one speech of three minutes length on the same question of the same day for each trustee. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Evans? Yes. I would like to move to strike the one speech provision as it does not lend to a discussion rather than a statement. That was a motion. Second, lack of second, call for the question. Well, there, there's still continued discussion. We have discussion. You have more discussion? Mr. Johnson. I, I do have one point. Okay. Uh, I have no problem with limiting uh, speech to three minutes because most items can be handled uh, efficiently, especially if items are provided prior to the meeting. Just like the past meeting that I had to call Bill Lozier in the middle of the meeting because I wasn't able to do any follow-up on that, uh, the items. Um, again, we need to work together and uh, making speeches and having things decided outside the meeting is not, not proper. We should have a full discussion in front of the public about what's going on in this township and, and it's not happening. For the questions, Barry? Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. Please come up to the podium. Present your, your name and your address, please. Hi, my name is John Deaver with Aspen Energy. Um, I'm sorry, John? John, yes. John. John. Is that yeah. good? Yeah, John Haber at Aspen Energy, and just want to talk to you about an aggregation program. Okay. I know you guys have been speaking out before, and you are currently in one right now. Uh, Aspen Energy, we're actually located in Dublin, Ohio, so we're local here. Uh, we've been around since 2000, and we have about 50 aggregations in the state of Ohio. Aggregation is a vetted process that gives the residents a option choice to have a lower rate for electric and natural gas. Um, I've been speaking with Mark for uh, um, probably since probably April March. or March, it's been pretty early, but going back and forth and just giving him information, being very transparent. On the things he's asked for, um, I provided uh, references for him, um, uh, our fees, our certifications, and just updates in the market. Uh, currently what's happening in the market, um, AEP just had their auction done last month. Uh, currently, right now, the EP is at seven three, so seven cents, just over seven cents. They just had their auction take place, and it was for forty five, excuse me, forty five percent, and it was just under twelve cents. So that was for June twenty twenty three, going to May twenty twenty four. So we're going to see a huge hype up here soon. Um, it's good to have aggregation in place because the rates that we can provide are not even close to that. Um, but you're going to see huge rates here coming up soon, and also natural gas <coughs> down. I provided um, the auction rate, um, the auction price, also proposal here, and also what's kind of going to the market. I pass those out at the end. But uh, aggregation, it's about you know doing what's best for the residents and being in a partnership with the township and um, providing any kind of necessary things that you guys see for. We uh, we want to be a partner with you, and hope we can in the future. So. Thank you for your time and happy holidays. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Since a report on the Citizens Advisory Committee is on tonight's old business agenda, I feel it necessary to address my comments at last week's CAC meeting. I actually called Mr. Leonard incompetent for his handling of the committee over the past seven months. As I expressed at the meeting, these are my personal views and I stand by them. As a former teacher, I needed to have expectations, goals, and intended accomplishments in my lesson plans. When I prepared a lesson, it was intended to have a specific result for my students. What information did I want these students walking out the door with? If I couldn't explain exactly what I was trying to accomplish with the lesson, it would be a waste of precious time for my students and me. By the way, I wasn't always successful with these lessons, but I knew how to improve and rework it for the next time. After seven months, I'm still at a loss as to what Mr. Leonard is trying to accomplish. In June, I asked about the survey and when that would be presented to the public. This just seemed like a sensible putting the horse before the cart kind of issue for me. Ask the residents what they envision for Etna Township now and into the future and try to adapt a plan that addresses those concerns as much as possible. I was summarily dismissed and told that the survey would be forthcoming in the next few months. My survey arrived yesterday, and if I hadn't been expecting it, I would have dismissed it as junk mail. The committee was asked for additions or corrections, and I suggested an open house to allow interested residents to come to the township hall, fill out the questionnaire, and ask questions. My suggestion didn't even elicit a remark from Mr. Leonard or Mr. Johnson. Last week, I asked how much response is expected considering the busy Christmas season we are in, and I was informed that we talked about that. Well, when it was discussed in November, I was under the impression that these surveys would be out by the end of November or the first part of December. Receiving the surveys middle to late December presents a whole new scenario for, to me. I hold this two to one vote to hire Mr. Leonard at $60,000 responsible for the situation. You hired a nice guy, not an effective and experienced group facilitator, and once again, Etna Township will pay the price, literally. Merry Christmas. Any more public comments? John Kennard, 10785 Palmer Road. I didn't get a comment last week or last meeting on the security system. Got some suggestions from my past experience. A security camera can be turned on during business hours and turned off. So you could have the camera come on at when you guys leave at six, seven o'clock at night and come off and you know turn off. That way, there, there's no video camera doing work during the day because if, if there's a security problem, you guys are here. Also, you can set those things to send a call to someone if they detect motion after hours. That call should probably go to the sheriff's office. They could be right here and check it out. Um, it was very interesting to hear what the gentleman had to say last week about the report that they did investigating. Um, I kind of forgot what I was going to say. Now. <laughs> uh, it's just here recording. Well, the guy that was here last week brought me to last meeting. Oh, uh, he made a comment that um, you can, I can record you and you can record me but you can't record this roof without notice. And that's my question. We've got a camera over my shoulder here. It's privately owned that records everything in this room. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody say in this meeting that this is being recorded. For anybody that wants to know, we didn't even have a sign up that says this is being recorded is what I took from his report that, you know, I don't know, maybe I misunderstood it, but him saying, I can record you, you can record me, but you can't record a group without notification. I was going to bring my umbrella tonight so I could hold it up so the camera can't see me. 
but I forgot it. So maybe I'll bring it next time. But uh, I still think this private camera needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And it is announced that it is recording every time. There's another camera being recording also. Ryan Davis, 8807 Watkins Road. Um, I want to speak tonight on the, NC, the NCA for our new park over here. As a board member, I felt it's my duty to keep informing the board of what's going on and inform the public what's going on or not going on with the NCA. Uh, I attended the county commissioner's meeting last Thursday. Uh, Alexis Fitzsimmons was there with Rolicky County. The question was brought up specifically after some other comments from other parts of the county about in this NCA. Uh, she, told, she told the committee or the commissioners that we still are waiting on Scannell. As Mr. Vance alluded to in a previous email a couple months ago, this is the most important part or important thing going on in the township. With no updates happening at least once a month on anything like that, I feel it very important that this is the last meeting of the year that this committee, this board, knows that they passed the normal date to collect taxes in a given year. Now the county auditor has to make an exception to even try to collect taxes for last year. So on top of the $57,000 that this attorney has billed, the NCA, which the township has paid for because the NCA is not collecting money, to try to fight one developer who agreed to sign this NCA agreement to get this going, why are we still paying an attorney when this obligation needs to be upheld and we need to be communicating whatever we got to do and not with somebody that's charging $600 an hour to get this done? What if we lose on this tax revenue for this year due to this lack of urgency? I mean, we don't even know. We don't have an update on where we're at with the land purchase over here. Signing the, the park land purchase with contingencies on the main section, the middle section of this park. It'll make two separate parks if this does not go through. And I'm not going to blame the people that sold it because we signed the paperwork. It should have been negotiated differently if we wanted to do something different. So with no updates from the board, the consultant, I think it's extremely important that we go into next year with the first meeting of the month Forgetting, last, forgetting this next, this past year and all the issues we've had, and start next year, the first meeting of the month, with reports from our trustees on the different departments and from our consultant to explain everything that's been happening that has not been shared with us. It's extremely important. Thank you. I agree. Slide 1372, Lindendale Parkway, Newark. So I come tonight because of a text message that was sent to me by the president of the board on Monday, November 28th at 10.40 p.m. This text message was not solicited, it was just sent to me. I will be reaching out to your family. I know who your sister is and your father. I would like to have a conversation with them. I have someone putting me in touch with your father. That's one message. You know, I got others that are just like it. So again, a uh, an ignorant statement from an ignorant individual. That's all I can say on that. The other thing I'd like to say is, and you'll deny it, I, I guarantee you, but the conversation happened. June or July, you contacted me on my cell phone like you had before, and you were talking about, you know, Mr. Evans coming into the township hall after hours, and you guys didn't know who he was bringing in here with me. And, you know, that was the initial discussion that was being talked about with the security camera back then. That you guys wanted to see who was monitoring inside the building after hours of what Mr. Evans was in here doing. So you're upset with him for the exact same thing that you wanted to do. It's ironic. But like I said, I know you're going to deny it. You know, that's fine. But you know, anytime like I send one email, I have no problem paying for the polygraph whenever you want to set that up and we can put those questions out there. Any other uh, public comments?
Gary Burke, Holder, 254 Trail East. I got three quick items here. First of all, I'd like, and Mr. Singleton, I don't believe is here tonight, but I'd like to thank him because last week uh, residents uh, got to meet with him and he was very helpful and informative in uh, going over some things and updating us both on the Scannell uh, problem, which we've had over there with development, and we looked at several documents, and then also on the Main Street project as well. So I want to thank him. The second thing I want to talk about is that this, this is a 40-page punch list on Scannell of deficiencies and items that have not been addressed by Scannell. Now again, this has been well over a year. This was produced by the Lincoln County Planning Commission, and they had the walkthrough back in November. And this is the 40-page report. Why we're paying a consultant $4,000 a month and he gives us no updates, and we as residents come in for free and produce this document. So I'm going to ask that a copy of this be printed by the township and attached to the official minutes. Second, third, it was stated under trustee comments at the last meeting that it was uh, a lie or not truthful that the uh, township had participated in framework process, which is the public-private partnership uh, that several jurisdictions have entered into to have some kind of an overarching planning process and connect all the townships, not all of them in the county, but many of them here in the western county and the villages and the cities that will be impacted by Intel. Uh, the chairman of this board made that statement, and I'm here to confirm tonight that her statement was false. That's not true. We can that's not true. This is my three Continue. minutes. Continue. This is my three minutes. Continue. We confirmed it with Mr. Leonard this last Wednesday at the land use meeting. We asked him, did we participate in that? He said, no, you did not. He said, if you had, you would have paid a fee, much like St. Albans and Harrison Township paid. So if we did participate, produce the invoice. But I'm also going to submit tonight for the record, this was put out by framework. This is a map that shows who participated and who didn't. Aetna Township is not included. And the second page of this shows that those that have comprehensive plans in progress, and once again, that's in the green, and Aetna Township's not included. So I'm submitting this as proof that Aetna Township, you can put as many business cards on the desk that say framework, we did not participate and you called it a lie, and you did not tell the truth. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any more comments, public comments? Alicia Zacker, Cumberland Trails. I'd like to thank trustees Rosalind McGee and Jeff Johnson for the Pike Street project. I think it's outstanding. You guys have that started and there's money for it. I think it would be a, a terrific attribute to this township. And um, I think that Mr. Vance also had a lot to do with that. Appreciate all the information and the things that you guys have accomplished so far, despite the hostility provided by Mark. And I'm not clear why you didn't file a police report on a missing server that you claimed was stolen. Why did you have your buddy do it? Why didn't you do it? I don't understand that. I got a copy of the police report, no one I would. And it's not a police report. It's a miscellaneous incident. It sounds like somebody demanded a report and they gave him one. They never said it was stolen. But you go and tell people it's stolen. This is another example of what you're doing. Yeah. How come you didn't do it? You're an agent of this property. He is not. I am not. You are. You claim it's being stolen, but yet you don't file a police report? There's a reason you're not doing that. You're just picking and choosing to get people to do what you want them to do. That's not a police report, sir, because it wasn't a theft, and it wasn't from stolen property. It was a miscellaneous incident. And you should have filed it if you thought it was stolen. Either way, it took you two days to put on YouTube a video that we all see all the time. And you had to put your little excerpts in there and explain what you did to justify 
all the video that you watched. We're not on all the cameras, not at 3 a.m. No one broke in, you didn't get a burglary alarm. You're watching people, you've been doing it for a long time. I mean, I'm gonna hold you accountable to it because that's what you've been doing. Thank you.
and since Edna Township is partnering in the essentially complete restoration and improvement of that roadway, um, Edna Township has the opportunity to continue to work with the task flow to revise the current maintenance agreement that has Edna Township paying for 100% of the maintenance costs from just a little past Edna Parkway all the way to 310. Uh, so what uh, President McKee has initiated leading up to her consideration on whether or not to support uh, the $3.5 million investment, uh, one of the items was to negotiate the revision of the existing road maintenance agreement so that the task one at the township would share the maintenance costs of the section of roadway from Refugee Road just past Edna Parkway 2310, as opposed to Edna Township have to come up with three and a half million, and then Edna Township have to pay still 100% of the cost from essentially Edna Parkway all the way to 310. So this isn't necessarily, it just gives authorization for you to negotiate with them. There is no final document that would be coming to us, correct? Correct, this resolution would allow the president of the Board of Trustees for Edna Township to reflect that she has uh, ideally majority support uh, from the Board of Trustees as she enters into negotiations with the City Administrator and Mayor of Pataskala to bring back a road maintenance agreement that's going to be revised to bring Pataskala into financially covering costs, 50% of the cost um, associated with maintaining Refugee Road uh, the section that's not going to be improved with the current project going forward. Okay. And then that agreement as proposed would come back and then the Board of Trustees would consider at that point in time whether or not you wanted to support its revision. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have nothing else. Mr. Evans? Uh, yes, Mr. Vance uh, was not correct about our portion of that uh, of the road. It's not from Edna Parkway all the way to 310. Potasco's got sections there. Uh, but I, I'm against this because any amendment to the agreement should come to the board. Potasco's is going to go to their city council. We're everything is being pushed to one person in this township without with. A disregard for everybody else and I think that's improper any agreement should be discussed and debate, debated in front of the public not in private and just done so I'm against this that you can talk to them all you want and try to come up with something to bring it back to the board but to just say you have sole power to negotiate and put into effect without board action, I think is highly improper. Um, what's, the, what's, the, what's the harm in bringing it back to the board for a vote? That, that would be my, I don't my, that's my, what he said. I don't believe that's what he said at that's all. That's what he said. That's not what he said. He said that it would come back to the board. It would, it would come back to it, correct? Duh. And it's, well, it says in here to negotiate the agreement. So it is coming back to the board. Well, they're going to have a negotiated agreement to bring it back here for our approval. We can say no at that point, right? Okay, that's fine. That, but that's the way I understand it. Am I understanding it wrong? Or? You're correct. Right. Okay, and, and I think that shows that th this was set on my podium right before I got in here. Why these aren't being, pro well, I do know why these aren't being provided to me prior, because our secretary said that she's being directed by the other two trustees not to. And that's inappropriate. This stuff should be provided to us so we can do our due diligence and make a decision. Instead of quickly having to try to flip through this and have three minutes to, to comment. It's, it's totally inappropriate and not the way we should administer this township for the benefit of our residents. Call for the vote. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. Excuse me. <coughs> Item of resolution 2212-2002, requesting that the Licking County Transportation Improvement District commit to creating a long-term plan for the improvement of Refugee Road for the Edna Parkway East to State Route 310 as presented. Is there a second? 
I'll second. Discussion, Mr. Johnson? Um, it looks like... And that's the one with the letter from letter. Mr. Um, Commissioner Flowers. Mm -hmm. Dated October 11th, and we're just now seeing it. It looks like they asked for an agenda, the November 9th agenda for the board. They just get approved by the board. The looking for the. Uh, <coughs> Would you like a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, President McKee uh, once again approached the TID about um, what it would take for her to support the, uh, the investment of three and a half million into the uh, Refugee Road Transportation Improvement Project from Main to the Parkway. Another one of her permission or position that she wanted clarification on uh, was um, she wanted to uh, make sure that the Licking County TID was going to place the improvement of Refugee Road from Edna Parkway all the way to 310 on some sort of formally recognized transportation plan for Licking County. She did not want the improvements to stop at Edna Parkway and have no sort of confirmation that the county TID was going to emphasize the importance of improving Refugee Road all the way to 310. Uh, so we, we sat down and we had discussions with the TID once again. We had discussions with our partners at Batascala. Uh, the letter uh, that you get from the letter from Chairman Flowers, it's attached to the resolution, indicates an intent for the TID to continue to go in that direction. Uh, the purpose of this resolution is to get um, ideally majority uh, support from this Board of Trustees uh, that we can send back to the Licking County TID uh, which formally states, you know, it is the expectation of Edna Township that the improvements um, associated with Refugee Road in the future do not stop at Edna Parkway, that they go all the way to 310. I'd like to just add, the, these discussions have been going on since January. Mr. Lozier and I have been discussing that improvement, and I mean, it is necessary, but one of the things that I do think we have to take into account is Per our JED, uh, I believe it's the JED agreements, the TID gets about 5% of those funds. And I think we have to proactively elect for those funds to be used for our, our projects. And why we're not doing that, or if we have done that, I'm, I don't think we have. But uh, that money should be pushed to our projects. So I think discussion on infrastructure and that is a good thing. But I, I would say that uh, just as the residents mentioned communication, these are pushed to one member of this board and there is no updates, no communication, no sharing, no by her or her assistant or the consultant. Um, so if, if you're gonna take everything on, this board needs to be updated frequently or copied in on items because when I was president, the other trustees demanded to be copied on everything, and they were. And now no one is being copied on anything. So again, just seeing this tonight, I, I'd almost want to say table it because we should have time to look into this stuff, but if it's just about discussion, I have no problem with that. But please update the board. Is that cost associated with this that we know of yet? Mrs. Barian, um, we'll talk about this as a board. Okay, you're, you're fiscal. I would like to know We're that. We're discussing, this, and this is in regards to, again, I'm going to ask you again. You are a fiscal officer, okay? We are a board, and we are discussing this amongst the board, okay? We haven't got to the part where we're talking about the finance because. This is a wish that we would like to have done as a, as a project that we're partnering with, with the task club. Right now, it's from Redford, it's from Mink Road to at the Parkway. We're talking about something in the future. Okay, so yeah, so, so you'll know. Okay, I'd, I'd like to amend my comment and just ask, is there a cost to this? 
as a member of the board. Of course there would be a cost. What there's, is there's, the approximate there, cost? We don't know what the cost will be because we're talking about three or four or five years from now. President McKee. Okay. Thank you, sir. I, I would just say that that response, you should have just given that response for a fiscal officer. She you don't is tell due some response. I should say, yeah, and you should, you're exactly right. She needs to, she's a fiscal officer. She is not a board member. Okay, she's acted like that many times. Call for the vote. Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Yes. I move resolution 22-12-2003, amending resolution 2203-1502 and appropriating additional funds for legal services as presented. Is there a second? A second. Second discussion, Mr. Johnson. Am I correct? We did we did ten thousand dollars to start with on this, to cover the services initially. Yes. And now we're adding an additional thirty thousand from unappropriated funds. Correct. That's correct. Are those bills that we currently have received already, or anticipate receiving? Um, up until December. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm glad this is finally being addressed. I, I had tried to get this addressed before, and our consultant, Mr. Van, said oh, we, the board could just approve and pay any bills they want. I did send a letter to our attorney uh, regarding this because I was concerned that the chairman exceeded her spending authority by $31,000. It was limited to $10,000 starting March 15th. And we hit that in June, exceeded that in June. Uh, brought this up numerous times, um, and it's just inappropriate. Uh, the, the board uh, referred my expenditure of $2,400 under my monthly authority to the prosecutor, and they said pay it. And the chairman has exceeded hers by $31,000. Now, additionally, I had a concern that we were being overcharged. Uh, there were fees that were uh, hourly fees that were approved, and um, there were more. So I was glad to see that the firm went back, and there was a credit of $5,700 and 20, uh, 5725. Uh, so thank you for looking into that. Uh, but again. Mr. Johnson, your question of are, are they due or they, they've been, been due. They, 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 these have been ongoing since throughout the year uh, that have exceeded uh, the authority. And that's one of the concerns I have is one person dictating everything and having all the control and not doing what the board has resolved. Um, so I don't know what additional legal bill, bills there are now, but according to this, if we up it by 30, there's about $5,000 left from the last billing to now. And I, I think Ms. McKee has you solely pretty active on things where I think most of the items, our prosecutor is our attorney for free. Most of the items should go to the prosecutor. Specialty things should go to Brocious and Griggs. Uh, the, the point of bringing in brochures and grace was for economic development. And it's every, everything it, with the kitchen sink uh, that the chairperson is going to them for. And I think it's inappropriate. It's fees that we don't have to be paying. And they're unauthorized fees. So this is an after the fact. We're going to have an audit of uh, a then and now. That's going to be a red flag. And we got to start properly administrating this township, following the rules, following the law, and following our resolutions. Again, I brought this up in the past and it was dismissed until I sent that letter to the attorneys, which I think professionally they have that duty to address it, and now it's addressed. But it shouldn't take that. Call for the question. Mr. Evans? Yes. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. I move to schedule a special meeting for a parliamentary 
training on, um, there's a couple dates this month, January 5th, which is a Thursday, um, January 10th is a Tuesday, and then the 12th, which is also a Thursday, um, it is a, um, it will be a special meeting, so is there a second, it will be training for everyone since people, you know, and the, res the residents would also be included in this training. So um, we have a couple dates out there. Um, again, the 5th, which is a Thursday of January, the 10th, which is a Tuesday, and also the 12th, which is a Thursday. And it will start at 6 o'clock, just like the rest of our meetings, and um, see if there's a second. I'll second that. Okay, so let's make a discussion right now, Mr. John Paul, please. This is an open, this is an open training, you're yeah. saying, for anybody that wants to come? Anybody that wants to come, and we would do like a mock um, nice. training. And um, this person that's going to do the training is very, very um, experienced in it. Um, they teach it. Um, they're willing to come in and take one of our old um, agendas. And um, we can set up like we are doing now as a, as a board, and we'll have the residents and they would train us to learn um, the Roberts rules. Would they require all of us to be here? Yes. Is that correct? That would make I cannot it better, yeah, we need to... Yeah. The 12th I can't do for the... Okay, so we'll so. take that out. Are, are we having a discussion or is there... Uh, yeah, we're a discussion. discussion. We're discussion, but Mr. Johnson has questions right now, Mr. Evans. He's discussing it. All right. And so people could come and sit here, and we could, we will, we will do like what? We were, just like we're we doing have a regular now. meeting? Is it a regular yeah, it, meeting it, it's it going to be, or is it just going to be a meeting? It's a special meeting. meeting. Um, we would take one of our old agendas, and um, we would just do like a mock meeting. Okay. So questions would really be asked. Meeting, but it's, it's, yeah. a it's okay. training. It's training. Yeah. So. I do have questions. Mr. Evans? Yes, isn't January 5th the uh, joint um, meeting with the uh, water, That's the not water right. and sewer board, Harrison, Tasla, and and all those. That's uh, not been officially um, announced that, yet. That is being planned. You've been contacted. Or you're aware of it. It's moving forward according to Mark Van Buren and the but police station. I, and, and so I, I, I think that's improper to try to plan it on a time when all our other partners within the water district are, are trying to put together a meeting under the very important topic of district expansion and, and all that. There's a lot of concern and there was a, a, a numerous <coughs> entities that went to the commissioner's office too. Uh, so I, I, I think it's highly inappropriate for the January Fifth, but how much is this going to cost? And who is this person that's coming in? Again, there's this person taught at a university. They're highly experienced, and they're when, not charging us a fee. What is their name and their company? They're not charging us a fee. All we need to do is know that if you're interested in coming to the training, because I would like to know the name of the Robert's individual rule. or their organization. You're the first one to bring up Robert's rule, so we want to make sure that we get the training that we need. So that, that is not an answer to my question. I asked his name is Joe Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a thing. Joe Smith. With with who? Okay, he's with he's not with anybody. He's a private citizen. Okay, so we're a having retired, a private citizen. He's a retired yes, he's a retired um, professor at a university that wants to come in and help us with our readings and I think it's appropriate for him to come So can in. you please share his contact I sure can not a problem. Absolutely. And it's not costing anything? No, it's not costing us anything. Okay. Would, would, it be more okay, so said, would it be more productive to have them come to our meeting and as a parliamentarian would do to interject and so we're actually doing something? Because I'm all for following Robert's rules. I've been trying to get this board to do that for a while and I understand that I have an issue on some of the items because we're all learning. However, the board didn't want to do a special meeting for the budget 
but we're going to do a special meeting for this. I don't think it's appropriate. Okay, so we went from the fifth. We can't. The fifth, we don't know for sure. We can have it on the fifth <clears throat> because the uh, water board has not committed to that date yet at, at all. Even though we did say we wanted to do the fifth, but they have not committed to that. And if they are not a part of the meeting, then the meeting will not happen. So. We can go to the 10th. Mr. Uh, Johnson said he can't do the 12th, so we have the 10th. The 10th is the okay zoning commission. Are you okay with the 10th? Yeah. No, that meeting's not going to happen that day. Okay? So that meeting's not going to happen on the 10th. So for canceling meetings, I think we should announce We're that. We're not going to. I have not. Okay. Call for the question. <clears throat> Mr. Evans. What are we voting on? Just some date? Parliamentary training. Well, I know, but what date? I mean, I did. President we'll Keene, whenever check. appropriate. Yes, sir. I would recommend for consideration by the Board of Trustees a motion to go forward with seeking to arrange a convenient date for a parliamentary training. Which we're going to do in January. We <clears throat> came up with the 10th of um, January. Mr. Johnson, are you okay with the 10th? I believe so. What about you, Mr. Evans? I couldn't commit right now. Okay. Like I it's said, it, 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 it's not this, going to be daytime. This, this again would have been good information to share with the board prior to not even the meeting, you know, but announcing. Just, just well, this, this is <coughs> we're going to get it on our agenda for this month. So if you can't do it on the 10th, that's well, fine we, with me. I don't have a problem. When are, with that. when are we doing the meeting with the prosecutor as the board? President McKean. We're not even talking about that. In conflict with that, not, or, this is an evening meeting, Mark. It's at six o'clock. Okay, well, I don't know when the prosecutors' yeah. meeting to yeah. help us. They're in the daytime. They're in the regular daytime. They and did not you respond that you can't do it until like January 19th, but that's not the that's not the question. No. We're discussing training right now. Right, but I so, think that's more important than this. So Mrs. make sure it doesn't um, conflict. Let's let's um, we're going to move on to 10. Uh, parliamentary training on the 10th. Mrs. Berry, can you call for the question, please? Mr. Evans? No. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. Um, I just want to let you guys know I've been working with the uh, Licking County Sheriff's Department prosecutor's office regarding the renewal of the public contract. And as of today, I have not received the contract back. So. That was on the agenda. We were hoping that we would get the information back today, and we did not from the prosecutor's office. So that's why it was on the agenda. I was making sure that we would at least try to move forward. So we are working on that contract, and that contract is to expire December 31st, 2022. So we're hoping that we'll get that information here soon. Is there a reason that we haven't gotten this done sooner? We talk, we call Lieutenant, um, <coughs> he, will not, he, Lieutenant he will not respond to me since you took over. I, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I, didn't know, I don't know anything about that. You, you, I have no idea. Okay. <coughs> Let's move on. <coughs> I move to approve Trustee McKees to administrate at the Township Hall security camera to replace with the state security at cost, but not exceed eleven thousand two hundred dollars. Is there a second? I'll second the discussion. Discussion, Mr. Johnson, please. Um, I looked through this a little bit. It looks like they're replacing the system we already have. Correct? Yes. I think that I will not vote for anything that is in this room. It's inside the building. We're going to call it security, we security outside. Um, I'm fine with that, but nothing in the building. Because that's where the secure points are, our lock systems on our doors and so forth. Um, that's why you have security. I don't, I don't know that we need to have this in here. I don't know what the rule is about the way the cameras are, whether we need to have cameras that only view from outside. Um, but that's how I would, I would feel about it. Because I was the one that originally stated back when we first looked at these cameras that were only for security in case something happened. We had a video record of it um, and not turn into surveillance like it did turn into. So that'll just fix that problem. 
So if it includes cameras in here, I'm going to be against it. I, um, I agree. Um, we all have cameras on our phones. So if something goes on while we're here, we can use our phones. Um, because I was posted all over Channel 10 News uh, because of a, a trustee that used the cameras as surveillance and he only accessed the cameras in this area, none of the ones outside nor after hours. So I agree with Mr. Johnson that we should just continue with the ones outside the building and not the ones inside the building. Um, we're here during the daytime, so, um, and that's when they would be in excess. So um, I, I agree that we should not move forward with them inside the building. Mr. Evans? Yes, uh, number one, the statements you made are false that uh, cameras outside weren't viewed or whatever. Setting up the system, all cameras were viewed. Uh, I find it just astonishing that after spending nearly $10,000 months ago on a security system, you want to rip out the new security system and put in another security system for even more. That is wasteful. That, uh, I, I've heard claims of IT professional, computer infrastructure specialists. I, uh, Joe Blow would do this. It, 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 you guys don't want what you are doing during the day to be video documented, not audio. There was no audio, as many people claimed and called their attorney wanting federal wiretap charges done. That was false. But if you don't want people to see what goes on here, because it is public records, you know the simplest thing to do is remove the inside cameras and restore the system. Now, I just found out from the records receipt that I got, the system disappeared. I never said it was stolen, disappeared on the 22nd. The investigator took control of it the 26th from Ms. McKee. So for four days at minimum, Ms. McKee had possession to that and apparently there's something wrong with the system where the, the investigator cannot access other cameras except camera 11. So I don't know if it was corrupted or uh, inter interfe interfered with, uh, but that DVR should, could be replaced. And if the majority of the board doesn't want cameras in here after they voted to put them in here and expect that cost, you just removed the inside cameras. Why are you spending nearly 12,000 Twelve thousand dollars on another system months later. It makes no sense. It's uh, the new cameras aren't any different than the other cameras. So are you sure. What? Oh, it's, oh, it's right. The app's on his phone. So no, no. I'm That's saying these cameras are. Cameras is it my? Is it? This won't be on his phone. Go ahead. But yeah. I is it? Oh, thing. so that that's what it's about. You want to limit access. And just like records, I, I request records from our attorney, and they say, Miss McKee says, no, you can't be provided these records from us, these emails. Yes, Miss McKee. That's inappropriate. You're trying to limit it even more. Change in the lockbox code. You blaming that on me, too? That, that's inappropriate. You You're trying to, but again, this is all about money. You can do anything with security to hide what you're doing, <coughs> however, to spend more money on the security vote. system, yeah. we just vote. installed. Call for the vote. Mrs. Berrien, please. Mr. Evans. No. Mr. Johnson. No. Ms. McKee. Well, I'm going to say that I'm going to support this. Yes, yes because I don't want, I'm going to support removing the cameras inside. Um, it says inside on these. So. Yeah, we don't want that. So we. President McKee, whenever appropriate? Yes, sir. We could get the proposal revised and bring it back. Thank you. I, I, I was just, I, just making a point of order that 
Mr. Vance is not a member of the board, yet you silence our fiscal officer. No, because this, this, this proposal has the cameras inside, but we don't want the inside cameras, so we need to get a new proposal. Right, and I thought, didn't she vote yes? Where did she vote yes? She voted yes, but she said there was no Right. Yes. So what are you asking, that we change your vote tonight? No, I want to make sure. It failed that you voted yes on the roll call. Correct. That's right, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, she voted Under all of this, since I've turned the meeting over to uh, Trustee Johnson regarding the Comprehensive Plan and Citizen Advisory Committee. Yes, at our Comprehensive Land Use uh, meeting we had last Wednesday, there was uh, some statements made by a particular member, um, Judy Kaffmeyer. Yes, I said that. Yeah, what? Yep, she said that up here. Yeah. The, and she said it pretty much in the same tone that you heard up there. Um, it was not uh, it was not to the betterment of the board that that was said the way it was said it was very critical of our contractor it could have been said much different ways um, it ensued a discussion for 20 minutes of everybody's time that was there um, because of that inflammatory judgment that she put on that about how she felt um, and I don't feel that she's a positive person that we need on that particular land use committee anymore. And I'd make a motion that we remove her only from that position. Wow. Can we make a discussion? Can we go into discussion? Second. Second. I'm sorry, make a I'll second. Discussion? Wow. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll start it off. I cannot believe President that. King, wait, wait, how are you going to say you're going to start it off? The, Why can't I? Okay. The chair has to I'll, recognize. I don't know, I Robert's rules, okay? So I'll start it off. I, I, so I believe the one. We're going to go into discussion, and um, we've Time gotten up. several complaints um, about Mrs. Kathmeyer oh um, being, and I've got emails. Um, I got her name. Yeah, I've had several complaints and emails as well. Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't think name calling is appropriate. It's very unprofessional. You always reference yourself as a school teacher. Well, you reference yourself as a school teacher, so you're a leader. So you're, you are describing uh, not the person. President I'm going to ask you, Mrs. Let me finish speaking, please, as the board, as the board, please. Thank wow. you. I listened to you up there, and I didn't interrupt you, so please let me have space. Yeah. Right. This is mine. Right. Okay. So I, you know, I've had several complaints. I've had emails come in as well, and um, we want a positive uh, board, and we want to do things positively here in Edna Township. Sure. And if we are continually to disintegrate our contractors, um, for instance, you know, you went after Mr. Leonard, um, our other trustee went after Mr. Vance here, and some other re residents did the same. Um, that's not how we should do business up here in, in Edna Township. We should do business in a positive manner. Okay, I think the, the, the way things is flowing now, we just it's, there are certain ones that are attacking, and you continue to attack people, and that's not how we do business here at the township. So, I would actually, uh, I would um, agree that you should be removed off that board, um, because we want people that are positive. You know, but there's a difference between having a discussion and even suggesting to someone that um, perhaps that your format needs to be improved. And perhaps that's what, um, exactly what was being said. You know, I told you, I said, you know, when I was a, a teacher, I had to do things in a proper order. The, those meetings get out of control in the way that it's just mindless conversation that has nothing to do with a plan. So that's what I was addressing. And, you know, I don't mind, you know, freeing up a second uh, 
Wednesday of the month. That's fine with me. You know, you're not, uh, but, you know, to say that asking questions and not agreeing with a facilitator is name calling, boy, is that abusive. Okay. Power abusive, okay. Ms. McKee. Okay, so you're addressing me. But because you continue to address me, Mr. Uh, Johnson brought it up. Have you addressed him? Okay, so I yeah, a lot of this him. is personal. Said, you know, personal. Have member on you the have to stop being personal. Have, okay? You know, addressed all of these things prior you to you. And it's like, what was the point of having Mr. Johnson there? This is not the way to be an advocate. You can't okay. personally attack people, but thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not attacking you. President McKee, that's three minutes. Okay, thank you. You did. No, I did not. Uh -oh. I said I will, incompetent. I, I did not attack anyone. I did not name call anyone. You're, you're taking my President McKee, we've got to move on to the. Anyway, that's enough. We've got one trustee with three okay. minutes. Okay. I want to make sure that I. And I will gratefully I resign, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. You have your wish. Right. You I'm said last that. week there were people on the board that you did not approve of. And I knew exactly who you were talking about. There is one more three-minute opportunity. Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Oh, yeah, excuse me, sir. Um, I, I do want to clarify that in my motion that I was referring to, which we all know, Judy Kaffmeyer. I did not name her. No, you did not. But I am now. I want to make sure I clarify yes. my motion. That I, I can read between the lines. Mm -hmm. I'm not blind. But um, there, the action is exactly like we're getting now. No, that was a, that was explained that she the same type of tone that you heard there, same type of tone you heard at the podium, um, and it was just said out of the blue, and even Mr. Leonard couldn't believe that it was going on like that. Um, there was no reason for it. There was no provoking of it. Um, just out of the blue, and like I said, it was. It took 20 minutes of nothing to talk about the whole thing because other people chimed in about different things. So to say that it was. A productive thing to say that is absolutely not true. It was very non-productive and very, uh, no, I mean, it changed the whole tone of the meeting, really. So it was, it was very non-productive. May I speak now? Not true. I didn't even talk after that. May I speak now? You got your three minutes, Mr. Evans. Thank you. I agree with Ms. Kapmeyer's concern. Mr. Leonard, when he originally proposed this, said he would take on one or two more clients. It far exceeded that, and I've learned that he's actually acting as a pseudo-administrator for St. Albans. He's not devoting the time to us that is required. I had to contact him multiple times after he put out the survey that mentioned Alexandria residents. He, copy and pasting, not even a pro providing the detail to give us our own survey. It was incorrect. We're not getting what we paid for. Do you realize that St. Albans, for the same product, and they're meeting two times a month, paid $20,000? We, we're paying three times as much <coughs> as you guys approved for this work. And I agree that the postcard, I would have tossed it. It's not even in color, it's the smallest size I did mailings during my campaign, and that was designed. We're not getting the service that we're paying for. We're not getting the attention uh, or the progress to put. <coughs> we're towards the end of it, and now we're getting input. Or is that input going to be used, or is it just ah, we asked for it? So I do have questions about Mr. Leonard's progress in this, and yours, Mr. Johnson. Uh, that's, I, I ran my campaign on following the comprehensive plan and that, while the prior board ignored it. And I, I think we're going down the route. I hear from members of the board that why show up? What's it matter? If the board's not going to adhere to it or if, if Leonard's not going to... There, there's no... Uh, even the meetings I've seen, it, it's not productive. Materials aren't really... There's no homework of, hey, research this. And so I wholeheartedly agree with... Uh, Judy Kapmeyer. She's a valuable member of that board, and I think it was very inappropriate and disrespectful to not have an executive session out of public to discuss your concerns 
and not name a member that volunteered their time to serve our township. Shame on you, Mr. Johnson. Shame on you. Call for the question, Mr. Evans. I don't. Well, number one, I don't think my three minutes were up. Twenty seconds. Okay. And I want to thank you for your service, Ms. Kaplmeier, and those that are on the committee. Continue to fight for what's right, because this is important to the entire township. And whether the board wants to or not, I think everybody needs to fight for this. So thank you, Ms. Kaplmeier. You're a great resident. Call for the question, Mr. Evans. No. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. That's shameful. You didn't need a vote. I resigned. No, We're going to move over to the fiscal officer's report. I move to approve the check registry for the November as submitted by fiscal officer Julie Marion. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, Mr. Johnson? No. A minute to three. Okay, Mr. Evans? Discussion? No. Except, well, except that it'd be nice to get back to electronic signatures on these checks. Roll call. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move resolution 22-12004 to approve the purchase orders as presented. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, Mr. Johnson? No. no. Mr. Evans? I, I just see that the, the purchase orders are on there for brochures and grades and some of the other ones. Um, I'm, I'm assuming most of the other legal fees have already had purchase orders. Or Do we have a blanket purchase order we for have legal? Blanket one, but I did these because Okay, and the brochures and groups, was that because there wasn't prior authorization and then now we have to do it for that? Okay. All right. Roll call. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKee? Yes. I move to ratify the payments of the above listed bills for December as shown on the payment listing. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, Mr. Johnson? No. Mr. Evans? Uh, yes, I do have a question about, just like my concern with uh, the attorney bill previously, other attorneys, we have limits with them, and I believe we've exceeded or, or will exceed those. Uh, are those being addressed? Uh, and also regarding the attorney's fees for Ice Miller, I believe that this board, not this board, the prior board, uh, approved a set rate, and that rate's now in, in the high 600s uh, per hour, and I, I believe we maybe do another refund there too. So I, I think uh, since you took it all over, I think it's imperative that we review these and have proper uh, billings. Um, the only other thing that I, I did learn that, uh, I don't know if it's still going on, but uh, the chairman would review these and direct our fiscal officer to remove certain bills so we wouldn't see them uh, and to approve. I think all bills should be uh, submitted to the full board. If any bills are going to be removed, they should be removed <coughs> in session and not by the chairman. Um, again, uh, <coughs> there shouldn't be any problem with removing things in, in, in the public. Um, so, and then the, the only other thing I would see here is the bill for uh, Brooker Neckler. Our fiscal officer had the authority to uh, have the legal advice uh, just like I used the, the authority and the prosecutor confirmed that it needs to be paid, I actually received a letter demanding payment from them. I, I don't want to see our township sour relations with various vendors, and so that, that bill needs to be paid. Uh, and, and I know the chairperson said I'm not paying it, but that was duly authorized at our organizational meeting, 2500 a month, true. 
It, it is very much well, true. Not true, Marx. That's right. not true. It right. is very right. much right. true. He's got 53 seconds. Yeah. So, yeah, please. Uh, so, again, follow the rules, follow the law. We voted for it. So we have to abide by it. They're due that money. We need to pay it. And again, bills should not be removed from lists prior to the board saying them. Thank you. Okay. Call for the question. Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKee. Yes. Okay, I'll turn the meeting over to Fiscal Officer. Therein to discuss the proposed 2023 budget. Um, if you all want to look at the legal size um, handout that I gave you before the meeting, uh, this is in the format that the county auditor requested we use. It has the estimated income at the top. Um, or the revenue that the township should receive um, that I am estimating to be 5.7 million for 2023. And then below that are uh, general fund expenses by account number um, itemized out by account. Uh, you want to draw your attention to 1,110-131 for the Township Administrator position. Um, $220,000. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm sorry. $220,000, what that would be salary and benefits. That's what it's been. Um, I have added in my fiscal officer assistant with an estimate of 100000 total salary and benefits. Um, let's see. Where's that? Um, this one. 110, um, Then there's oh, just the regular. Oh, there's two of them. No, there's me and there's this. There's yeah, zero and no one. It's right under our. Okay, they're both the same number that you're not asking. It's just a one at the very end. Oh, one. There's zero, 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 and oh, zero, zero, zero. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so then everything else just goes by insurance benefits, the usual unemployment, auditing services, UAN fees which are maybe marked up a slight bit from last year just to accommodate for so additional to about 10 percent or 15 percent it's not even that and some of them that i know are the exact or even less because we didn't spend as much last year um i did act i did put in three thousand for fiscal office supplies um my computer at home doesn't like to turn off and then turn back on so we need to have a discussion about I need to do it. Wait a minute, Wh which one is that, Julie? Um, it's at the top of page two. It's 1,110,410,0001. Fiscal office supplies, 3,000. Fit from the bottom. Office supplies. Fiscal office okay. supplies. So just. There's 7,000 for regular office supplies, and then there's fiscal office supplies for 3,000. Is this okay, the UAN? Said, that's, I'm sorry. Well, is this the UAN computer you're talking about? I'm talking about the one from Walter that I took home. That's oh, laptop that you took home. The, the computer that I took home with the screen and everything from that. Is that the UAN computer? Though? Yes. It is UAN. Yes. We pay a fee for that. I don't know. I know. I can't remember when he renewed it. Because <coughs> um, I thought that all came as a package. It can, but I don't know when he renewed it. I don't know. So I, this is just should, an estimate. Fix it, I would think. But it's also really old, so I don't know if they can. Yeah, um, we just got a new one not that long ago. I think I was thinking like last year even. Probably. We've got the kind of laptop that's all new. Were they all purchased at the same time? I don't know. There was boxes of printers I remember sitting around. Not a printer, it's a computer. Yeah, but it all came in the same package. Oh. So, okay. Well, well, go ahead. If oh, this is just an estimate. Yeah. I okay. was trying to guess what we meant. President Mickey, just a point of order, real quick. Is this, are we having a budget work session at this point in time? We're just having a discussion. Okay. She's going to her, her, her. Would you like me to put a motion for a time limit or anything? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I also did pencil in physical <laughs> office assistance supplies at 5000 if we so choose to do that, or if you so choose to do that. Um, what else is in here that's a little bit off? Mm 
And these things you're telling us are lines that you added. So yeah, some, I'm just kind of pointing out the things I think. Thank you for doing that. <coughs> so, Julie, because so we know what stuff was added. I mean, I I can compare it from a previous one, but you did it in a different format. Yeah. Can you do like an asterisk beside it when you just to let us know, just so we don't. This is actually copied and pasted from my um, five-year tab okay. into the auditor okay. spreadsheet because he wanted Except to you added it. those additional. Okay. No, the, well, these were added to that five-year tab okay. a couple days ago. Okay. So some were at my request, and I understand some were at the chairman's request. Um, what else is there? Let's see. I know that we, we need to discuss, or you, you need to discuss, the improvement of sites. I have uh, 615000 in there, and that's from last year. I believe that was related to the park. So that's something that could be taken out, possibly, if, we're not, if you're not ready to do anything with the park this year. Well, <coughs> I know when I look at that on the last year when I initially did the budget, that was money that we had saved, <coughs> mostly over the garage or different things, I think. And I just pushed it over into the park as what I did as a, as a budget item, basically. So. I mean, we could take that out and it would reduce the expenses by six hundred and fifteen thousand, unless there's some planning that. Yeah, in it. case you have to purchase um, some things, or I would keep it in there because we don't know. Okay, I would keep it. In there. There's also four hundred thousand for buildings, which I okay I can't anticipate, but I also don't know about what, what you guys discussed. Well, I know some. I've been asking for the security system, ironically, at the garage to be upgraded since the beginning of the year, which desperately needs to be done to protect that properly. Um, why does not be, be done, but that can be included in that. Um, and I did, I forwarded to the board, I'm sorry if I'm sorry. No, go for sorry. it. Because uh, right underneath that is the machine, machinery, equipment, and furniture. Uh, we need, uh, our, our one truck is a 2005 International, uh, which it's, you know, a lot of repairs in that. and. Uh, Bobo recommends that you know it, it's time for replacement. Uh, it, if we started uh, the process now, we might get it uh, operational in October. So I think we got to move kind of quickly on that. That's a very large expense, 165 to 185. Uh, also, I believe what was it the uh, 2008 uh, F350? Is it? Uh, so I, I mean that's a little bit cheaper. And, Getting the four-wheel drive, it's only two-wheel right now. Um, that the uh, pressure washer and numerous other items that I, I brought to the board and tried to bring to the uh, Jet Z BIA. So a lot of these uh, we could probably I had a figure in there about uh, 465. I mean, in the beginning of the year, most of the items uh, to when I tried to present them again back in August went up 10 percent. So they're going to go up again. I, I uh, increase those uh, amounts by 10% again. Um, but the longer we wait to get these, um, the higher the cost is going to be. And I would anticipate that uh, if these are allowed to be brought to the Gen Z BIA and, and the board for reimbursement, as we've done in the past, that uh, about half of it probably could be reimbursed. So I would hope these do not be blocked again. And that we could uh, recoup some of those some of those funds. Um, I didn't say anything, but I should have said something. I was going to office supplies, and um, we need to look into purchasing a updated copier. I'm not sure what the cost of those are. I think we get a proposal maybe on our next um, to have it ready for our next meeting. Um, I know that one still has a warranty. I think we're getting an extended warranty on it. Okay. But, um, she was going to talk about leasing, the leasing yeah. option, not really. Leasing. Right, that's what you do. Yeah, you have yeah. to buy it for Right, that's exactly right, lease them. And I would suggest that we get one that collates and staples and, I mean, a, pr a proper copy. So we can put that in the budget. Well, I think, would that be in there already? We don't know what it is. So. It, there is um, in the general fund. There is a large amount for other other expenses, which ends up transferring out to specific funds that we need, like office supplies or certain things <coughs> that aren't necessarily planned for. Um, 
Well, for the leasing, we wouldn't have a very big outlay. It would just no. be monthly. So where are you on that, Julie? Uh, we're at the very bottom of the second page. Okay. Um, so that machinery and equipment is in there at 465. There's a transfers out, which is 100,200. But that, that is to cover the 310 loan payment. Um, so basically I have a general fund expenses at 4,278,000, which is a little high. I have the gas tax fund in the contract and services and operating supplies at 80. You get on the highways fund, that's the salaries of the road crew, the benefits, repairs and maintenance, electric, um, just normal stuff. I do have, I think it's a little bit of a duplication. There's 500,000 for road crew um, department equipment there, which kind of ties into what Mark was talking about for some of the 465. So that could be <coughs> Was that in her previously? I thought yeah, I, I, I thought I saw that. I have four sixty five and I have five hundred. I didn't change it, I just copied and pasted it, I think. Four sixty five. Yeah, I think I mean that's duplicated, so I think we should Well the four sixty five is a big equipment and the capital outlay and then there's oh, five hundred miscellaneous road crew department equipment. <coughs> Yeah, that, I mean, that's very high for smaller yeah. tools and stuff like that. We don't, and if we're going to do it that way, I, I think above a small tools and uh, kind of equipment like that, a year, what do you think we, we spend on replacement and stuff like that? I mean, tens of thousands? Yeah. I, I'd say reduce that to, to 50,000. I mean, this budget can be changed as needs to change. So, I just think if we're going to count for the larger stuff rather than the smaller stuff. So you're thinking 50,000? Yeah. Can you well, say 465 or something? No, the, the roads and bridge fund, it needs to be 50. So oh, wait. On, On the capital outlay program, it's 465, yeah. if that's how we're putting it over there. Yeah. And then 50,000 for just very small equipment that could need walkers or which is you're saying it's on which is on the third page uh their highway fund <coughs> i think we need to go higher on that because it's hard it, i have to do with the transfer mm -hmm. from general to the highways could you speak up please oh because it's uh, sure, um i think we need to go more than 50. i think we need to do like 100 because it becomes a pain to transfer out because of the highway down. funds and that yeah so okay. you're talking about line um, 2031 330 790. Yeah, to, okay. I, yeah. I would think it would need to be 100, but that's up to you guys. Okay. And just because we have 100 in there doesn't mean we spend, we still have to approve, right. have board approval to make those expenditures. Okay. So, okay, um, I'd say 100. Yeah, we're going to go down to debt service, 100,200 is there for the payment of the bond for 310 loan. And then, let's see. Contracted services, we have, I have a million and fifty thousand in there because if, for the 629 contracts, that if we get the, that's the expense for this to go forward, we, we get the 1.4 in return. I don't know if the person, I couldn't find it for you. Is that still coming? That money yet? Well, we've got Schuster Ways, uh, a million. Uh, we've got uh, Global Parkway, which is there's two parts of that, three hundred thousand with the six twenty nine, and the uh, uh, Ohio Department uh, grant, which is uh, hundred thousand. The hundred thousand one is the one that I've been uh, speaking with Jeff Breeze with TPA that. Uh, we got that grant. There's no formal agreement like the other ones where we, we retain 5% and we pass it on. So there's no agreement. Uh, technically, we could just keep it, but the, the promise was that they were going to use 50000 for landscape improvements around Ashley. And I think that's great that they're going to try to beautify it in that. Uh, and Jeb Breeze, I mean, this isn't certain, uh, but he was saying he'd be fine with letting us keep 50000 as a fee or 
or donating them back. So, uh, which was nice, and uh, we can use that for anything. But um, so, you know, we'll get five percent of the other ones. Uh, just like we completed the Global Parkway one, it was eight hundred thousand. We sent out seven fifty, and we kept fifty thousand for our administrative legal and all that. We're not making money on it. I think with all the legal fees and that, it just kind of lets us break even. So basically, money comes in, money goes out. Got the ten fifty you're saying? That's what. Uh, expensive for the one point four million. For the project. 1.4 million really coming in, you're saying? For the grants, 1.4, and then they, I had to count the expenses for the 1 million. Okay. But which, you know, maybe a little low. Well, so we're going to come out. We should only have like 70,000 that we're keeping, so it's probably a little bit more that we'll be okay. putting out. So right. that'd be 1.3 million. It's 1,400. 1.330. 1. 1. 1. yeah. If we do five, okay. if it's like the other one's five. Percent, but if Jeb Brees, you know, lets us, uh, I thought it was a higher percentage. I think it's five or six on uh, most of the 6.9s. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move that to 1.3. <coughs> yeah, I do 1.3. Um, so that takes total expenses to about, well, that takes. Mm -hmm. About the same because if we take the road crew department down to one hundred thousand and we put this up two hundred. It's two fifty. It's about one fifty. It's almost about break even with those two things. And I'd say with the, I mean, the buildings and the site improvements, you got over a million right there. So if we're not actually doing that large projects and that, I think we'll be significantly better. So. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, we recently were contacted, we, we got on the list to be approved for Pike Street, will that be coming up at any expenses this year? Any expenses on that? Um, the Pike Street money won't, it's not available until 20, you can treat now from now? 2025, 20, Okay, so we would be doing anything with that at all, like we wouldn't need any surveys or anything like that? Okay. We've, I think we've already paid into that. I mean, the prior, prior board, I think it was like 700000 Yeah. 440000 So, that's what I said, we don't need to out any money for that. We need to out any money for the Refugee Road project at all? We have expenses this year on that? Mm -hmm. There none this year? Not this year. Even if we took the loan, it's not due. It's not due for the first full year or two. So. But I'm saying would there be expenses that we could pay this year and not? In 2023, that we wouldn't pay up front. Yeah, pay up front, so we wouldn't have to take it on the on the loan. I'd I'd still caution against take, doing that because the the Pike Street project they're gonna they only are given 2.6 million in the projects in 2026. The cost went from 4 million to 8 million. What's it gonna do at 26? Let's just on that. Our portion of that is going to be a very large portion. We're going to need funds set aside to move forward. They're not going to look at a zero bank balance say, okay, go ahead. So I think it'd be premature if after all these refugees going to probably be pretty expensive if we're going to go from uh, Aetna in partnership with Petasco 310. So to, to spend out that money where you've got to have matching funds and uh, I'd really caution against that. It's just a fiscal policy. The, the question now is again: Will we have? Will there be expenses that you know of that would have, that would come that would be part of the bond that we could turn over to the bond, or that we could pay out this year? Do we know where that's? Oh, well, the right to be wrong. Yes. Okay. But, because I know it's kind of tied back to what you're saying, trying to pay stuff up right. front. And I know they're going to use money. The, they yeah. already have. There's money in their coffers that they yes. can use that first. That's right. And then anything else rolls over to a bond and we get half of it. Well, we they pay, pay half of it. Right. So I guess, there, I guess what I'm asking is, is there money to anticipate that we have to spend or roll over the bond by the end of this year, the 2023? Because I know our first payment is not even due till is it 2020? I'm going to say 25. Yeah, 2020. 2025. So if we, so we're paying. So you basically you're trying to pay 
some of the interest off before the first payment. No, I'm paying. I'm paying the bill when it comes due. Instead of but it's not due until 2025. So you well, won't pay. Okay, let's not do that. What, yeah. what, Jeff, what Jeff's saying is, when the invoices come in, pay our portion so it doesn't even hit the loan. Yeah. Because the loan is kind right. of like a home equity loan. Right. So draw down our. Right. And yes, yes there's going to yes. be significant amounts we because the if, if you looked you at the. The construction schedule. There's a whole spreadsheet with this that I've been dealing with since the beginning of the year um, that outlays the timeline and that. And there's going to be significant expenses because I think the road's going to be completed next year and the next year. So between this year and next year, you, you're going to have in the 24. We're going in 24, so 2025 is when it. So the end of 24 is when the road. No, there were. They're not. starting now, but I'm saying it would be. For 2025, would be our first payment. He's right. not talking about payment. Yeah. He's talking about invoices coming in right. that we could pay instead of going on to that loan. So that's going to be this year significant amounts and next year's. I'm not sure about the completion, approval, and then payment. So it might be kind of delayed a bit. But yeah, there, there's going to be quite a bit probably coming in this year. And we've got those spreadsheets. I don't know if you're yeah, copied. I'm not copied yeah. in that stuff anymore. I've requested to be, but I'm not. I so Ms. McKee yeah. does have all that information. Yeah, but I think we should table that discussion um, about the. We can always amend it. Loan payments and that. If you want some questions answered, because I know well, you want to reach out. I'm just saying, I'm going to put, yeah, I'm going to find out this because you know, we need to put a line item in here if we're going to appropriate some yeah, from that. Right. So that that's fine. Okay, okay, so you want to put something on there for net for? <coughs> <Well, that's laughs> not going to be on there. If yeah. there's not, like I say, Pike Street, if there's going to be nothing on there, then don't put anything there in the budget for Right, right. Because there's going to be something for us to get to put it but, in there. Yeah, yeah. But I think we should have another yeah. workshop. We, we should have an actual workshop to look at projections, especially with Amazon's abatement coming off. Amazon would get, it's coming down, it was 1.2, now it's 1.1. That what happens if they leave? That That's where we're getting a significant amount of money. And we've got to do these projections, <coughs> I think, as a true workshop and figure out what our plans are, what what Pike Street, when that's coming in, refugee and all that, to look into the future uh, and for different scenarios. So I agree. And then that will give us an opportunity to want to pay forward. But I, I think the board should make a decision on do we want to pay it off instead of, it's a cheap loan, 3%. Let, let us sit there, but it's a 20 year loan. Right, but at 3%, we're, we're not even, we had a 0% on Orchard Glen and we just paid it. I don't understand why you want to take 3% or 0%. So. Um, I mean, we need to look at Maybe we need a, a financial advisor to come in or Julie can run some projections and we'll just, we'll just some, provide some advice. We just need to decide how we're going to spend the money here and, and right. I don't want to short us so that we're shortened. But I remember the days when we didn't have any money here. And you were down to the nickels and pennies on this on these. Well, we don't just because we have it doesn't mean we have to spend it. We could set that aside for future payments, and, and then if something comes up, my point is that we could get to that again someday. And as long as the difference in us actually having to pay a pair of bills and not because we're still paying off all this interest. Well, if you give away three and a half million dollars in the next two years, you're not going to have enough money because you can't give all of our capital away. For that, and then still have any left over to carry over and pay our bills. So, well, so that's what we need. It will be a. It, it needs to be a conversation with a financial advisor and yep. the auditor. I agree. I cannot certify yep. that to be done. Yep. I agree. And two, all our funds don't come in on January first, yeah. and that so. Yeah. I'm just saying you have you have money appropriated in here for it, really, so I guess we can use it. But appropriated that. versus having the cash are two different things. Well, you say you got a million dollars for roads in there. I mean, right, but, but that doesn't mean we have a million dollars right now. So we can pay. use that for it. I mean, we could pay with that, right? If we, we don't have anything. we have seven million expenses here. We don't have seven million in the bank account. Yeah. We're going to through the year get right. road money, tech. It, correct. If this, we need to pass something as an interim budget or a temporary budget tonight so that we can have 
operating funds for January 1st so that I can go ahead and get a purchase order so that payroll can be done and that kind of thing right at the beginning of January. I'm asking for an interim budget. That doesn't mean this is final. Which is appropriate to have one. I think y'all, we did it before in January, right? Is that, that was what in the he, past? He had done an interim, interim. An interim so, budget, yes. Yeah. You he have to do January. something. Thank you, what? We'll just get it in January. I mean, I the way it works no, no, is, no, no. Stops, you guys, I'll tell you how it works. Here's how it works. There's, you can do an interim, interim budget if you want, okay? Wally did one last year for us because he was going to leave. So we did an interim budget to pay for the first three months. I stuff. thought you had to do it. He did the interim budget. Okay, he did the interim budget for us. Normally, it's always been done. Every year you can ask Laura. It's been in our organizational meeting. We pass the budget. Bills are paid that first meeting. That's what this is. It's just going to be an interim budget. And no, that's the budget for the year, so we always pass. Now, if it's, we pass the budget on the first meeting in January. I think that's that, Yeah, and I'll go back and look at minutes. And Mr. Vance, do, did you um, have something to say? In my investigation, I didn't see any interim budgets being adopted at the last meeting in December. Okay. Yeah, there, there never were. We didn't. Ones I thought were discussed at the first meeting and yes. passed at the second meeting in December. No, we discussed them, made changes we thought to them, whatever, and then we had a final one ready. Like we're talking about tonight, only we had to find, we had like this meeting now, we would say, okay, what well, this, this, and everybody, everybody do with that budget. Yep, and like, they walked right up, we passed it January 7th, or January 6th, or whatever the first meeting was. Okay, well, the next meeting is January 4th, and payroll hits the next day. Right, okay. and that's when we had to pass it. I can't do okay. payroll that quick. It, it does not hit when I it, yes, it, it does not go in the next day. We haven't even got to payroll week, really. Not for us. I think we get paid next Wednesday. We get paid in December, then we skip the first week of January and get paid the second week in January. Well, if you look at well, you, you can't. It, but if you pass up the second meeting in January. Then we pass the first meeting. We get paid the 28th, and then we get paid. What about the HSA funding? President McKee, the first meeting is January 3rd, it appears. Yes, that's correct. So, so, I take it some members do not want to pass an interim budget tonight for what reason? Delay for delay's sake is, is not good. Um, this is why I call for a work session. And I mean, just because it's in the budget doesn't mean it's being spent. It still takes board action. So to allow our fiscal officer to create those purchase orders, to because what you're going to do is dump on January 3rd all the stuff on Julie, and she's going to have to scramble to get things paid. To like let let's give her the courtesy of having a plan, and I don't understand. There's nothing controversial in here. Um, I think the administrator is a little high, but again, we don't have to approve that. Um, I, you know, we had others that were willing to do it for a hundred thousand a year, uh, several. Um, so, but I, I think for the benefit of the township, we need to pass an interim budget tonight, so we can move forward. Our fiscal officer can start. Well, more than we present one then. Do we have that's one? What this that's is. what this that's is. That's what this is. She's been working yes, with. Yes. This is a full no. budget. Yes, no. it is. Yes, it is. And that's what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not approving. Yeah, yeah. there's stuff in here that I don't approve. Okay, well, then everything stops January 1st. Okay, that's fine. Okay. You still have to stop. The whole point of tonight. It's, just, I, it's not a threat. I'm just telling you that we you got to stop. This is not how it should run. You come January 1st until I have a budget, and then I have to go through all the system requirements of putting it in. And I cannot pay anything without purchase orders that I would re I would create between now and then for just the basics of utilities and cell phones and everything else that happens in this township. It's not to pay a fiscal assistant or a, t a township administrator yet. It's just for the basics. And just because it's an interim budget doesn't mean we can't change it or not spend it. Even a budget is an estimate at this point. It's an estimate until March. I think our well. Why don't we discuss what your objections are and, and handle it? I'm done. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to move on. I think we table it. It's your duty as a trustee of this yeah, township. Table it. You're going to table the budget. 
Tell them that. Tell yeah. Mr. Johnson, you have a comment? No, just so you know, then the health insurance that comes out the first can't come, we can't pay the health insurance then. Okay. okay. I don't think you understand. Yeah, I do understand. How do we do it for years before that? Well, we don't pass it to anybody when Laura has the resolution already. It's in our minutes. We didn't do temporary other than last year. I won't have permanent numbers until, 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 until after January 31st. You can't do permanent until you have a certificate of estimated resources back from the county budget commission. President we McKee. We already have that back. Well, that's the tax plan. Today is, today is December 20th. Uh, I would say we just confirmed that we could do it at the organizational meeting. And if you confirm that is not possible and something significant and negative would happen between now and January 3rd, you have the ability to call for an emergency meeting That's before correct. December That's correct. 3rd. That's correct. Why, why do we have to continue to delay the administration of this township? I would suggest that each member of this board in Arthur Sullivan look at Twinsburg up in Summit County, Ohio. They, they even have it on their website of the budget process. The chairperson and the consultant that's supposed to have all this experience should have been starting this back in July. All right, let's move on. Right. Okay. 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 I've seen lemonade stands run by. Okay. Call for the question. Oh, that's right. Right. Well, we I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to table it. You're going to table it or are you calling for the vote? No, I'm going to table it until we, if we have a special meeting. Um, for the budget, then we'll have a special okay. meeting. But we will that just clarify those? Mr. Uh, Johnson, Wait, Johnson, let's just clarify Johnson. one thing. Okay, I can't do the Mr. first Johnson. payroll because, okay. let's just talk about this for Mr. a second. Mr. Okay, fiscal officer please. please, I have to have, listen, I have to have a purchase order mm -hmm. for the wages. Okay. If that's not approved, I can't do the purchase orders without a temporary budget. And if I can't do them until after that January 3rd meeting, it's going to be really tight because I have all the system as well. And the health insurance, health insurance is going to pay without a budget. Okay, so there's no option at all to have a temporary budget. Yeah. Okay, we did it before coming in because when the last board left, left us with. No, he left you with a temporary no, budget. Yes, Jeff said right, that. Right, but he did a. He was here through January. So January, so we were fine. So we're, we're fine. In the past, there, there was also a lot of impropriety done, just like Ms. McKee's uh, expenditure of 30000 over the resolution. We need to follow the law, and we need to follow ORC. Our fiscal officer has been working with the auditor on this, about proper procedures, about what, what needs to be done. Okay. And for you not, not to discuss what your objections are in public, Okay, um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I need to look over this some more. I'm not ready to move on this. It's not. So you're tabling it? President McKee, whenever appropriate. Sir. We have time to confirm you said that's any, amazing. yes, yes ma'am. So, where are we at with the motion on this thing? Is our motion to discussion? We're just in discussion. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're just in discussion. So, well, we I, call for the, we, I move. Call for no. The motion. There's no. There's so, you need the motion to the table? Is that what we're asking? Or we're just, just no discussion? Matter. So, it doesn't really matter. So. You're just tabling it? We can table it and um, be prepared for the, uh, do a special meeting if we have to, or a work session. You wouldn't do a work session before this now. Now you're. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mr. It does matter no, for, does to allow our fiscal officer to. You're, de you're denying her an assistant to properly. Oh, that would go. Oh, okay. Yes. So that's And then you want to so throw right. this on there. Hmm. Okay. What do you mean, hmm? This is a discussion. Okay. Or it should be. I'm sorry, Mr. Stern. Should we just adjust, adjust, adopt the budget we had last year? And then we can just change it. Yeah, this is I an mean, estimate based on last year. I it's not in stone. Right. It's something that's going to but constantly we, be changed. It's going to be changed at the January 3rd okay. meeting. I'm going to move on to uh, trustee comments, please. Um, Wait, so you tabled it on just your, your authority? 
I'm tabling it. Is there a, is anybody else want to second the table? I'll make a motion, now I'll make a motion to table it. I, I make, I move. I make the motion to, to table I just, I, I was for, I move to adopt the interim budget as presented. So this is why we get a Palmer Ferry training because of this. I've made a motion. This is exactly why we're having the training. That you don't want I've, to have. I've made a motion to, to adopt the inner budget like as that. presented and changed through our discussion. I'll fix this. I'll second. Thank you. you call the question. Discussion. Oh, discussion. You call well, it a question for discussion. Yeah. Well, a d discussion again. What I would like to point out is budgets can be changed. They're typically changed five, six times a year. So anything in here can be changed. It takes board action to actually spend it. So if the numbers were eight million for the office supplies, we wouldn't have to spend it. So I don't understand why we cannot give our fiscal officer the professional courtesy to be able to prepare to give her this authorization. And then if you want to come in here and strip whatever, you can on January 4th. I'm, I'm not supporting it, so I'm not going to vote for it. I, I just don't understand. Yeah, I, this, I, it. I did a work session with our fiscal officer since this board didn't want to. And most of these items are from our current budget. If you look side by side the past five years, this is the kind of information we went through. We did our due diligence. Just to delay is not an option. We've done it so many times in this township. This is important. The health insurance is important. Other bills are important. I'm done. All right, you're done. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'll call the question Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Johnson? No. Ms. McKee? No. Okay, then we can move on to um, Trustee Coggins. Three minutes, to three minutes, please, Trustee Johnson. Nothing. I'm, I'm going to say that um, I think it's appropriate for me to bring up framework. Um, just to let you know that Mr. Uh, Vance and I had a uh, call from them, and we went and had a nice meeting down there back in you know, is that September, Mr. Vance? A couple months ago. A couple months ago, so. And um, they reassured us that we will be included in the um, outcome, which Mr. Leonard will present the comprehensive plan when it's completed. Um, they also assured us that we will get the report. We will be included. Um, they reached out to us because they wanted to, us to come in and have a conversation with them. And they, they were concerned about what was going on up here at the end fight, the end fight. So that was a problem. My trade work, you know, kind of a problem with us being a part of that. But we are now going to get the report, so we're not going to be left out. They reassured us that we asked them that they want the money to for us to pay the fees that the other townships and the cities have paid. They said no, but they would make sure that we got the final report and that our uh, comprehensive plan will be included in it. So, do you have anything else you want to say, Mr. Vance? Right. Okay. Is it this trustee comments, not yeah. consultant comments? No. That's, that's Mr. Evans for you. Not great, so. Okay. Okay, Mr. Evans, your turn. Okay, regarding framework, uh, it would be nice if the entire board was notified of their request to participate, not just one person making that decision not to participate. I wonder why. Again, hmm. bringing things to the full board, Mrs. McKee, that's rude. Um, and uh, again, uh, is this board going to participate in the, the prosecutor meeting that I, I requested that they become involved because of the concerns of the improper actions of the board and what should be done and what, what shouldn't be done. Uh, it was uh, stated that January 19th, are the other board members going to participate in, in that is my question because I think it is uh, required because based on conversations with 
even our attorneys, that there's a lot of impropriety going on. Um, and uh, regarding um, the security system again, uh, I, I'm glad we're not moving forward with the total replacement. It, it's we got to restore some common sense and, as a resident said, communication. Why things are being withheld. Our legal counsel is being told, do not share with Mark Evans, that the board voted to not share. We did not. So I've had to re resort to records requests, and those records requests aren't even being complied with. Uh, it is improper, um, again, even areas of the township being locked away from a, a fellow trustee with equal oversight. What's happening is just sole control of the township and it's improper. We got rid of one person that was doing it last board. Uh, it, it's not right. We need to start working for the benefit of the township. And I am appalled that Judy Kapmeyer was removed from the comprehensive planning committee. She was a, a great member of that. And to, to do that again in public was just shameful. That should have been an executive session. I mean, that's it, not right. And uh, the, the other thing, I, I'll add on a positive note, uh, I do believe in doing things for the community, even though that the township isn't willing to do anything. I personally am hosting a Santa visit here uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday the 21st, between 6 and 7.30. Uh, we'll have Mr. and Mrs. Claus to take pictures, talk to them, cookies, hot chocolate, warm chocolate, um, and stuff, so I invite everybody to come out here for the kiddos, uh, just make it a good event, because these are the kind of things that we need to start doing for the community. Uh, things also like maybe Food Truck Friday, uh, movies at the park. Uh, let's, let's focus back on the residents, and just through development, activities, anything, bringing people together. I do this for my community, in my neighborhood, so we should do it as a whole. Too much our staff don't work for him every second. Oh. I have no authority to pay them. Our fiscal so officer just indicated that there's no uh, authority. Is there a motion to adjourn? Ask Julie. Is there a second? second. Thank you. Roll call. Julie, so there's no. I don't call Mr. Perry. Mr. Perry, I've asked you. Correct, so they don't so need to roll more on January 2nd. Roll call. Okay, you have disrespected me as a president at this board for a long time. Wow. I asked you to do the roll call. So move it. Let's, let's I'm trying to get a legal opinion. If we can pay the employees on January 2nd or not. I'm going to ask because you. Because right now I do not have the authority. Mrs. Brown, could you do the roll call, please? Mark Evans? No. Jeff Johnson? Yes. Rosalind McKay? Yes. Time is 8. And as president, I did the roll myself, too. Maria? <laughs> and to be clear, Maria, that's so.